What are these triangular posts? It's a good question. These are called witness posts, and they are used uh, in surveying. They were used in the early days of surveying, before GPS and all of the modern technology we have now to survey this area, create survey benchmarks, and basically map out the hills and elevations of not only Angeles National Forest, where this is, but all over the country and the world. Let me tell you a little bit more about how it works. Now to start the story, we're gonna rewind to a time before TikTok and Instagram and all of those things to the mid 1800s when a lot of the land that we know today as the lower 48 was quote unquote acquired by the United States government um, and everything sort of west of the Mississippi was a bit of an unknown, right? So they formed things called surveys, which were basically projects led by a few different people to go out and map areas of the West so that they would know whether it's mountains, farmland, whatever it might be. Um, a famous one was led by John Wesley Powell. He was tasked with surveying the Rockies. And of course, if you've been to Arizona and you know Grand Canyon, you see Powell's name all over the place. I believe he was the first gringo to go down the, um, the Colorado River through the Grand Canyon. Don't quote me on that, but he was one of the first. There was also one in California called the California Geological Survey that was led by a guy you might have heard of called Josiah D. Whitney, who Mount Whitney is named after. He was the boss of that survey and they found the tallest peak. But anyway, these surveys went on and it wasn't until about 1879 that they were all unified into one government department called the USGS. It's actually called the United States Geological Survey, harking back to these original uh, map making surveys that went out to map the West. So the question becomes, how do we measure all of these peaks in the vast expanse called the American West? Now in the old days, they used to survey using string and rope and it goes back to ancient Egypt. In the Middle Ages in England, a popular uh, method of surveying was the chain. And a chain was a 66 foot piece of chain that people would carry around and measure plots of land with. And if you ever wanted to know where a mile comes from, a mile is 80 chains or 5,280 feet. But obviously we're not gonna drag chain over the Sierra Nevada mountains or the Rockies. So that's where a device called the theodolite, I'm trying not to butcher that, theodolite comes in. It was invented in the Middle Ages and it's essentially a site. And if you've ever seen a survey crew and you see them out in the street these days, they're always looking through like a little viewfinder and that's a theodolite. Um, obviously it's a modern version of it and it's hooked up to GNSS and GPS and all of that fun stuff. But that was what the surveyors used to measure the land. And the American surveyors actually took a cue from something that the English surveyors in India uh, did. They started something called the Great uh, trigonometrical survey, I think in the early 1800s to the later 1800s, where they mapped the entire Indian subcontinent, including all of the Himalayas or Himalayas as they I think they're supposed to be called. Um, and when they did that, they actually mapped Mount Everest to within 31 feet of its actual elevation as measured today. And that was in the 1850s. So Using the um, theodolite was a very easy way to, I say easy, a very effective way uh, to map mountains and large pieces of land. Okay, so here's how it works. I'm not gonna get too deep into the math. I'll put some links under the video and in the article where you can check out um, more detailed videos on how this principle works. But the crux of it is if you have a triangle and you know two of the angles in the triangle, and you know the distance between those two angles, you can calculate the third angle within the triangle, and then you can also use um, trigonometry to calculate the other distances of the triangle. And basically the way a survey worked was that it would lay these triangles all over the land um, and just essentially create a whole meshed system of triangles where they could calculate how far everything was from each other. Now, there is a wrinkle in this where you can calculate elevations using this as well. And if you think of it in a simple way, you can just flip the triangle onto its side to calculate an elevation. 
And that's how everything was mapped. So using a uh, theodolite and uh, measuring, you know, measuring a small distance in between two points of that triangle, then they could figure out how far away everything else was and how high everything else was. And that's how the survey worked. And until we had, um, you know, GPS and GNSS systems, that's how surveying worked all the time. And it still is used that principle, obviously with more advanced tools today. And you can see crews out, like I mentioned earlier, doing surveys using a theodolite that's probably called something much different now uh, that's robotic and levels itself and all of the fun stuff there. But that's how it all works. And that's how these early survey crews mapped all of the points in the West, the Sierra Nevadas, the Rockies, the coastline, everything was done this way. So these witness posts came in because once a point was established and you knew where it was, you could mark it with a witness post or a witness mark or a reference mark and then measure all of the points around it. And in the beginning of the video, I was on a place on a peak called Stoddard Peak, which is a smaller peak, very prominent in the middle of much higher peaks at Angeles National Forest. And once that witness post went up, surveyors could basically cite that witness post and then use the um, triangulation calculation to figure out all of the elevations and distances of the higher peaks around it. So you'll generally see witness posts on top of prominent uh, mountains, and you'll see them in the middle of maybe bigger peaks that are kind of harder to climb or to conquer. Once you have that easier peak, you can just do the math and um, do the calculations and figure out the elevations and distances to the higher peaks without necessarily having to go there. And that's what the witness posts are all about. Now, the witness posts in Angeles National Forest in Southern California, I've heard, are from the 1920s and 1930s. Today, technologies like GPS and LIDAR radar have made surveying uh, a thing of the past. Essentially, if you have GPS, you can calculate an altitude uh, and a point on Earth within one centimeter, not on a GPS that you would buy at REI. But on a surveying GPS, you can do that. Um, there's also LIDAR, which is a very detailed radar that gives you seven, uh, up down to 15 centimeters of precision. And um, they basically fly over Earth. And it's been speculated or rumored that a lot of the Google Earth elevations are calculated by LIDAR. And if you have an iPhone or probably maybe some other phones too, LIDAR is the radar that's used to do a face ID too. So it can basically map the elevations on your face to figure out, you know, if the face is yours or not. So that's it. Pretty cool witness posts. Uh, now you know what they are if you see them. If you like the video, you found it interesting, if you could please give me a little thumbs up. It helps me out a ton. So thank you for doing that. And uh, any other questions about stuff you see out in nature, in the wild, in the backcountry, just leave me a comment. I will do my best to answer it. All right, guys, I'll see you.